All right, guys, I've been talking to you about the news that is Corey Anderson. So Corey Anderson, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, is a Bellator fighter. We got to talk to Corey and find out what's going on. Corey, why don't you take it from here? Um, well, it's time for something new. Financially, it was a better move for me. You know, uh, it's been my relationship with the UFC hasn't been the greatest, but you know, uh, like I would say, you sit there and cry with spill milk, or you pour a new bowl and keep moving. And that's what I did. I just poured my new bowl. I got tired of dealing with the same stuff. Like I said, it wasn't nothing too bad. It wasn't negative, a negative breakup, but it was just I was. Didn't feel like I was getting respect after all the time I've been there. They didn't see my worth. Bellator did, so financially it was just a better move. So, Corey, I only know what I've read. I mean, this news broke yesterday or the day before. This is pretty new. What it appeared is, so you were not released. You asked for a release. You went and found a new home. Do I have that right? Yes. All right, so when you end up at Bellator, and I've done the same thing. I've, I've been at both companies, too. And one thing with my experience, when I went to Bellator, I had an opponent the same day as I signed that contract. Do you have an opponent? No, not yet. I met with Scott the next day. He said he want to wait till after the new TV deal or whatever starts for Bellator before we get anything going. But they already said they're going to get me fights. They're going to keep me consistent. Um, the biggest point, like, I found right away, like I told Scott at breakfast, I've been in the UFC seven years and never had a face-to-face -face sit down with Dan, and I've asked for it. But the fact that the day after I signed with Bellator, Scott was willing to meet me. That right there was already, that meant a lot to me that the owner would come from his home and sit down with me and treat me like another person. So I'm already excited about being a Bellator. Well, very cool. But if, if we were to guess, I mean, Corey Anderson walks in to any organization, a top guy. So if Bader and Nemkov are fighting, I mean, there's only so many players that are left. Uh, by example, Phil Davis. Phil Davis's name would come up. Phil Davis might be your next opponent. I'm speculating, but what do you think? Possible. Yeah, it's possible. But um, after our meeting, Scott tweeted, uh, I think Corey is going to have his eyes on the Ryan Bader versus the other kid's name. So I don't know if he was hitting that. He won my first fight to be against the winner of that. Either way, I'm game. If I got to fight one to get there, I'm game. Like I said, um, Roy McDonald, he came in. He had to fight one before the title. Chris Cyborg, she came in, went straight to the title. So either way, either way it goes, I'm willing to go. All right, cool. So, Corey, let me ask you a couple of things. Let's just look ahead. This weekend, Daniel Cormier versus Stipe. And I feel as that puts you in a hard spot. Like, you don't necessarily get to just cling to your wrestling brotherhood because they're both wrestlers. Not to mention, they both already done this. We know for sure both guy can beat the other guy. So how do you see the trilogy? I see DC getting it. I was out there helping him this camp. Um, me and my striking coach went out there the first time. We worked with him a lot of things that he did wrong in the first fight that he was getting caught on. And I made sure when I sparred, I did the exact same things that Stipe was doing. Like in the fourth round, every time he went to throw a punch, Stipe would rip to the body. You know, so we worked on that. Like just know when he's, when you start putting on him, he can see you getting tired. He's going to start ripping that body again. Every time you flinch, every time you throw, he's going to slip and counter that left body hook, left body hook to the body, body, body. Then when you start blocking, he's going to come to the head. He's going to mix it up. And we worked that a lot. And uh, I feel like he's ready for that. I have a high strike, strike, striking output with a high pace, you know, so we put that on constantly. So his cardio is going to be ready. He's ready for the high output striking. Um, he's ready to block, defend, and come back. And most of all, he's back to using his wrestling. That's the biggest thing that he needs to worry about. He's a wrestler. You're an Olympic wrestler. Use it. You know, and I've said it, been asking to it to him, and I feel he's going to go out there and he's going to use it finally. And weight seems to be an interesting part of this story, right? I mean, they fought twice, and both guys weighed in at different things, and then you had a different outcome. What is DC walking around at? Do you ever see him on a scale? Have you ever asked him that question? Um, I asked him, what, two weeks ago when I got out there the first day? I think he said he was like 237, I believe. I'm not sure, but he looks like I told him, like, you're 237 now, or whatever he was. Where were you when you fought him the last time? He said I was 235, and he looks way different. The reason why I asked because he looks small. But when he fought Steve Bay last time, he looked fat. So I thought for sure he's going to be way lighter. But if I believe correctly, he was a little heavier. And his body looks in way better shape. He actually got like a little core going on. He's not like we wrestled and it wasn't like you're grabbing flat. He's pretty solid everywhere. So his build is definitely different.
Now, there's all sorts of stories like Daniel was saying he's quarantined and his wife is pregnant and he's training in his garage. How accurate is all of that? I mean, are you, are you guys isolated in a house and, and what, he converted the garage into a workout room? Yeah, exactly what it was. He, um, his house where his family stayed is a pretty nice size garage and he has it all matted and caged up and wall mats and everything. So the team would come there and train like people that was in camp. Everybody was getting tested. When I got there both times, I had to go get tested and make sure I was clean or positive negative. And then, um, yeah, he has his old house that they just moved out of that he never hasn't put on the market yet. And everybody stays there. He has his own chef. His nutritionist is there. Um, his strength and conditioning coach flies in. He stays there. His striking coach, when they come in, everybody stays there. But you have to get tested before you can stay. So he was definitely in that kind of like the awesome fighter mentality where you're away from your family and you're just with your boys. That's it. Every day we go to the gym, we come back. So we would go to his other house to train. We all shower in the back room and we leave because he didn't want anybody seeing his family, being around his wife and possibly sharing that the COVID if you had it and didn't contract it, but it was on you or whatever and share it to his family with his pregnant wife. So he had to commend him for that. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I, I do respect the precautions. And I read about him. I'm, gl I'm glad that you could clarify that it happened. Hey, Corey, let me ask you uh, more of a personal level. Let's back up. You were in the UFC, top guy at 205 pounds. Currently, the champion at 205, John Jones, is flexing as though he's not going to defend that title in a period of time. What happens to guys like you? Like when you were over there and a top guy scratching for the top and then you find out the top guy's not going to put the belt up. Is that a demotivator? How does that work? You know, I mean, in my mind, every time somebody asks me about it, I just say, I'm not really worried about it because either way, I'm not up for a title fight right now. I got to worry about my next opponent and my next outcome. I got to go out there and get another victory and solidify to put myself back inside of contention before I can really worry about it because I can go out there and lose another one and then it really didn't matter. It'd be a while before I was even, even in title contention. So I try not to stress myself on it. You know, I understand Jones's reasons. He wanted more money. If he don't, if they don't think he's worth it, then he don't think it's worth putting up towards the belt. Can't be mad at him for that. I similar was in a similar situation when I just left. You know, I feel like they didn't expect my worth. They didn't find my worth to be what they wanted to put on it. So I left. Cool. I mean, I'm I'm with you. You really can't complain. If everybody, if everybody puts their ideas on the table, there, there's really nothing underhanded there. Corey, you got anything else you want to get off your chest? You got anything you want to share with old Chael? I mean, other than that, I just want everybody to know everything was good. Uh, a lot of people think I left, like I got cut or it was just the reasons I left was just, they got different reasons why, but the reason why was just the better for my family. That's it. Just want everybody to know what was going on with me and my family and situation, what we got going on. Bellator was the best move for me financially and career-wise to make different opportunities on the outside. So uh, with my fans and everybody, I just want to thank you guys for supporting me. You haters, I thank you as well. Well, Corey, you're, no question you're a hard-working stud, and you deserve to be happy. It's hard to find happiness in this sport, man. This is a rough life that you've chosen, but good for you. I look forward to your next move. Thank you, Jeff. All right, take care, Corey.